Welcome to Mercurial Outboard Motorbike. Before we start on drawing up the bevel gear output shaft housing, we need to know where to put it. So we need to know where the two gears set relative to each other. So I'll set these up at 90 degrees. I don't have a pinion depth setting fixture as yet, but I've, so I've just guessed it, but it gets shimmed anyway. So by putting that at what well, I think is the right engagement at 90 degrees and the correct height, I can measure where that gear is relative to this bearing and we know where to position this shaft fore and aft. Let me show you how we're going to do the bevel gear input shaft. There's our bevel gear. Um, this piece is the original shaft that came out of the uh, bottom of the engine down to the gearbox in the leg which I've chopped off which proves it's not very hard, which is good. That is the original propeller shaft, if you like, uh, that lived down the bottom. And uh, there's our bevel gear that we're using, and that's the original dog ring. And it turns out I can use it all. It works out really well. Um, that, that'll be mounted in the, in, the, in the bevel gear housing. It slides through it. Luckily, it's got a shoulder on it. It stops there. Dog ring goes on and drives it. I can turn that down and put a little little ball race on there. And we need to remachine this end of the shaft to have to have this spline on it. Um, at the moment, it's too hard. It doesn't need to be as hard as it is. It's it's very hard because it's got a uh, used to have a needle roller running on it there and also there. Uh, but we can put it in a furnace and soften it enough to be machined. Um, starting with, it's some, I don't know what it is, it's some sort of weird stainless steel. But we'll drop that little test piece in the furnace 550 degrees for a couple of hours and see if it becomes soft enough to have a spline cut in it, um, but still hard enough to do the job. Bit of a win. A little bit of progress and the scheme of things. You may remember planning to use this um, bearing and this gear, which is reverse gear in the outboard as my forward gear. Um, I've been told, and I believe, that if you use this arrangement um, under power for any length of time in the outboard motor, it blows up, which is because that, that gear is not ideal for, it's good for the radial load, not so good for the thrust load. There is a thrust washer that goes in there, but um, I've got too much faith in that as a long-term solution. Another option is to use the forward gear, which has got that big timp big uh, needle roller on it, uh, which is fine, but in um, in the out the, the needle roller needs something to stop it doing that, the tapered roller rather. And in the outboard, it's got this little I don't know if you can see a needle roller bearing in there, which slips on the shaft and holds it nice and true, while the thrust from the gear as well as the thrust from the prop will go through this dirty big taper roller. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't really suit putting it around the other way. It doesn't fit over the shaft. But um, there's a nice solution at hand because the lovely people at Timken make a tapered roller bearing that's exactly the same size as that ball race. Um, 45 by 85 by 19 or whatever it is. So that still goes there. We replace that with a taper roller. And to stop it rocking, because we're always in gear with this thing. The dog ring will hold that to that. We can put a sleeve in there, press it onto the shaft and hold it true. And then the, the taper roller will be happy and we'll have a bulletproof, durable bearing support arrangement. Carrying on with the mock-up in a little more detail. Now that I know where the gearbox goes in the bike, I made a little wooden mount to sit it in the right place. Not very exciting from this side. But over here we can see where the input output shaft sits in relation to the swing arm of the frame. That's pretty much where it's going to go. And there's the clutch in place. Bearing in mind that ring gear is going to disappear. And it's going to stick out overly too far compared to where your foot goes on the peg. So um, every reason to carry on. Next step is to strip all the unwanted 
gubbins off this bike frame. Half an hour later, here's a pile of unnecessary gubbins. I might do I might do something with that wiring loom if um, if it works out. And uh, here's a sort of naked motorbike. It actually looks quite useful in that configuration. A lot of work to do. But um, we'll build it back up again from there. Back to the drawing board, as they say. Here's a fully detailed, dimensioned and toleranced bevel box input shaft housing drawing, ready to go off to the machine shop. Also ready for the machine shop, that's the bevel gear output shaft housing, which has worked out quite nice and simple. That goes on the back of the other unit. Two Timken bearings there, a couple of circlips to locate the, the pinion and the drive gear sits in there. Um, little little bearing in the end to support the end of the input shaft. Not too bad really. There's our bevel gearbox input shaft housing. It gets machined out of that which is um, originally the propeller shaft. Needs shortening and remachining and putting a spline on it. Different spline. And here's our bevel gear output shaft, which gets machined out of that. And the spline there is for the little pinion. A taper roller bearing there. All of this gets chopped off and taper roller bearing there and the secondary drive sprocket sits there. And we need to put a little thread on it to hold all this together. Which would be a nice little change for the machine shop, but it's worked out okay. While we're waiting for people to make gearbox parts for us, we can um, turn our attention back to the motor. In that time, these um, really quite beautiful little mercury carburetors, I can't use because they need to be that way up, not that way up, which is a shocking shame because they're, um, they're very nice. 40 mil choke, three off, all linked together. I can't use them, so I'll take them away. Bye bye. So what we got instead, that's a 44 IDF Weber carburetor, made in Taiwan, not very expensive, which do does the job quite well, but because um, unlike the Mercury carburetor, which has got the float bowl off to the side, the Weber float bowls in between the two chokes in here, which means it's all a bit wider. And it can go on there like that, that's fine. Um, but it means the gap in the frame for it to poke through is really wide. So using a bit of lateral thinking, or 90 degree thinking, I've got to make an adapter anyway. Probably going to work out better like that. And plan A was to have three of them stacked up quite nice. But um, to be honest, one or two will do the job. And it would be nice and leery to have one there and one there and have the four trumpets poking out through the tank of the motorbike. Um, but I haven't quite made my mind up yet, made my mind up yet whether to do that or just have one in the middle because it'll be just as good. And it makes the hole in the tank smaller and the frame simpler. So we'll see. That's where we're at. Now to finish off what we need to do here, that's our bevel gear output shaft, we need to get the drive down to the input, to the clutch, um, to the gearbox, which is down there and down here, um, using uh, the primary drive chain from the Harley-Davidson onto the Harley-Davidson clutch. And uh, going, this is a 18 tooth gear, 18 tooth sprocket rather, that's a 36 tooth sprocket. And going on the internet to our sprocket and chain centre distance calculator, with 50 links in the chain, the distance from there to there wants to be 141 mil. So I've actually lowered the gearbox a couple of mil 
to get that to 140 odd and I can shim it under here to get it exactly right and uh, we'll carry on from there as a, as a sprocket to go up here we've got this unusual, slightly agricultural but really quite nice thing there's a double row half inch pitch sprocket and to drive it there's this tapered sleeve there's a female and a male taper inside there and a split you pop that in there he says pop that in there do all the bolts up and it simultaneously pushes out onto the sprocket clamps down on the shaft and they tell me that's good for 200 newton meters oh, sorry 600 newton meters and um, I think I'm dealing with about 100 here so that'll do the job beautifully without having to make any splines or keyways you're rather nice the other issue we've got to deal with here is that when when this chain's got tension on it these two things are trying to pull themselves together um, there's that and there's also the tension on the final drive chain going out to the back wheel trying to pull this thing out of the out of the gearbox so to help react to that load there's a bearing that goes here the inner track is already on the shaft out of the gearbox and uh, to to use that we can actually use the Harley Davidson original cylindrical roller bearing down there there and uh, and a plate a backing plate that goes from the gearbox output shaft down to down to there and also as a mounting uh, mounting plate for a cover so you can put all this in oil and keep it lubricated and clean and the plate that goes on here bolts to there and will obviously deal with that quite well and reasonably well with with that so here's the drawing for the little plate we were just talking about these four bolts bolt onto the gearbox up the top the, out, the output shaft housing that little detail is to take a little housing that'll hold that bearing and I've put a bit of curve in it for a couple of reasons um, one if the chain wants to slap around it won't bang on the straight sides and make a horrible noise and also it looks nicer with a curve on it you don't see too many straight lines on an AC Cobra and uh, there's a ring over here which will be the basis of um, a cover aluminium cover which will be revealed later as usual